I was saying, y'all, it's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and man, we got to talk about it. Now, there were a lot of negatives to take from this game, and of course, we're going to dive into them, but there were also some positives. I mean, it's preseason football. The final score doesn't necessarily matter. What we're mostly looking at is how the starters looked against the starters and then individual performances from starters to backups to see what we can truly build on. I mean, we have some clear weaknesses, which at the very least, we know what to point at and be like, all right, we got to fix that. But there's quite a few of them, which is the scary part. I'm not too worried. I'm not panicking. It's still preseason, and it was a really good team. If we think about it, the Chiefs are one of the best teams in the NFL. But still, allowing them to go, what, 5-5 five of five or 6-6 six of six on third downs with Pat Mahomes in the offense, that's inexcusable because – at least with the offense, there's quite a bit of injuries. I mean, Armani Rogers, an undrafted free agent, and Eli Wolf, who's definitely not making the team, probably not even making the practice squad, were our two only healthy tight ends in that game. And they pretty much played the entire game. And then the offensive line, we had Sadiq Charles starting at left guard. We had Keith Ishmael playing pretty early snaps at center. Like, as soon as the backups came in, Chase for the A started for a little while, but he was on pitch count because he's dealing with injuries. You had Aaron Montero, I believe, at right guard, like, fairly early into the game. May have even been starting. And then all you had was Samuel Cosme as the only starter on the field at times. Again, after Chase Roulier was done with pitch count, your starting left tackle was Cornelius Lucas, who just got back from injury. So we have so many injuries on offense that you can kind of say, okay, there's a little bit of excuses there, but still at the end of the day, we still got to be better than what we were. And we're going to dive into a lot of the negatives, but again, there were some positives. But the defense is really scary because, again, even though it is the Chiefs, they didn't have Juju Smith-Schuster, no McCole Hartman, and Travis Kelsey didn't even play as long as Pat Mahomes did. And then on defense, the only injury for real is Chase Young. That's it. Everybody else is healthy. And not only is everybody else healthy, but outside of Chase Young, these are all of the same starters from last year. So it's not like communication issues can be an excuse, not knowing what's going on in the secondary, all of that. There's no excuse. Again, if Chase Young were healthy right now, this will be the same exact defense as we had last year. And then with Chase Young gone, I mean, if you think about it, in that four-game win streak, Chase Young got hurt in the first game of that four-game win streak against the Buccaneers. We continued to win three more games after that without him. And so this is technically the same defense from that ten game win from that four-game winning streak last year. No excuses at all. Again, the offensive line tight ends have a lot of injuries, and even they stepped up to an extent. The defense, there's literally no excuses. But that's really the theme of everything. But of course, we're going to go down the roster and we're going to try to look at every position group and even some of the backups, the guys that stood out the most. And we're going to break down what really happened today. And it's not black and white. There's some gray areas. Some specific guys had good moments and bad moments. It's not like we have guys that really did well all game and guys that played poorly all game. There's some guys that had good moments and bad moments within the same game, even in limited snaps. So we're going to dive all the way into it. We're not just going to put a blanket, Jamin Davis had a good day today, or such and such had a good day today. No, we're going to talk about, well, he mostly had a good day, but he also had these mistakes right here type of thing. Or he had a really bad day, but there were moments where he made some plays. Y'all know how we do, though. We're going to go position group by position group, starting with the quarterbacks and work our way down all the way to the offensive line. And then we're going to start with the defensive line and work our way all the way down to the DBs again position group by position group and we also have to talk about special teams as well man because who we is not looking good now granted the special teams covers look better but the special team return game is abysmal and it's not even just the return it's the guys blocking for him as well it's terrible i know i haven't seen ron Rivera's press conference yet but i know it was terrible i know he was livid and then anything else random that we may need to talk about but this is just an overall review of what happened in this week two preseason game saturday august 20th against the chiefs from four to 7 p.m and before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure y'all pull up every friday to the broadcast podcast and most importantly make sure you pull up every sunday including tomorrow at 6 p.m for us to do the post game live stream call in of course we're going to talk a little bit about training camp but we're mostly doing a live stream reviewing what happened in this preseason game and again it's a call in show so it's for y'all of course i'll rebuttal i'll ask whatever questions y'all may have but the show is literally made for y'all to call in and voice whatever opinions y'all have special teams defense offense specific players positive negative anything and again you if you want to ask questions you may ask questions as well three minute timer so make sure you come with your ideas organized your points organized and without further ado let's get it
Well, before we get into like literally everything, just to let y'all know, we came into the game and already knew before the game started, running back JD McKissick wasn't going to play. Tight ends Curtis Hodges and Cole Turner weren't going to play. And then of course, John Bates was not gonna play as well and Logan, P and Logan Thomas is on the pup list. Then you also had offensive lineman Rashad Hill, Andrew Norwell, your starting left guard, Wes Schweitzer, your direct backup to all the guards and even the center, Charles Leno, your starting left tackle, and Ron Rivera, I saw something about that it was a minor health issue, so they didn't want to risk it. They didn't want him to fly, but he should be good to go. He should definitely be there for the next preseason game if we play the starters. And then you also had backup guard Nolan Laufenberg, and then starting right guard Trey Turner. And so it's just like we the offensive line in the tight end group was completely understaffed and we were even missing a running back but the defense literally had no excuses chase young is the only defensive player that was not healthy enough to play today literally that's it absolutely no excuse like i already said and before we get to the quarterbacks man 9 of 15 on third downs is unexcused is inexcusable i mean granted they started six of six at one point so they finished three of nine the rest of the way but that's still unacceptable and especially for us to and especially for us to go three of ten overall in the game that was abysmal absolutely terrible that's unacceptable starters and backups but the starters got it the worst the starters were easily the worst on third down again we allowed the chiefs to start five of five or six of six with pat mahomes i know they were six of six at one point but i think it was pat mahomes that was five of five and then the backup guy came and got that sixth one i think and it's crazy too because we have more yards than them but also discipline at one point in time i think we had more penalties than we had points or at least we were tied because it was we had seven points and i think we had seven penalties at that point but we ended the game with seven penalties for 75 yards which is two more penalties and 25 more yards than the chiefs that's unacceptable and they also won the time of possession barely though it's not a huge difference but still there's a difference 29 minutes and 25 seconds to their 30 minutes and 35 seconds only slightly over a minute difference but still like that you can't lose those and then we also lost the turnover battle granted the only turnover was sam howe late in the game anyway but that was our chance to win the game it was 14 to 17 we had the ball with less than three minutes left like two minutes and 40 seconds left and then that sam howe interception killed it i mean the Chiefs scored like three or four plays right afterwards so that killed any chance of us winning the game but again it's the preseason so winning the game is not the priority but still you prefer to win the game it feels good i mean the ravens are undefeated in the preseason and that has to feel good to say even though it doesn't account for anything because the patriots be going zero of three in the preseason quite often but it still feels good to win your preseason games when you can and that's also funny too because we go against the ravens next week and pretty much everybody's already penciling in that we're gonna lose it because the ravens have the record for the longest preseason win streak in nfl history and us going in there zero and two not looking good but at the end of the day again you take what you can from games winning the preseason game doesn't matter that much what matters most is what the starters look like versus the other team starters and then individuals from the backups that's what we're mostly evaluating today that's what i'm mostly always going to evaluate when it comes to preseason games but man this team did not look good today starting with the quarterbacks carson wentz not as good of a performance as he was last week now granted it wasn't terrible but it was just so man it was so bland it was just there it wasn't bad again and then that one sack he took to get us out of field goal range i believe that was really bad because the offensive line gave him enough time to get the ball off if he needed to if he wanted to if he had somebody open but he i, I don't know i gotta look at the all 22 i'm gonna say that a lot throughout this video i gotta look at the all 22 to see for sure but it looked like carson wentz hesitated too long then he tried to take off it was a sack that was his worst play other than that he was straight he hit guys that were open he was hitting guys even that weren't open he hit it in a spot to where they can get it i mean he ended up finishing the game six of nine for 64 yards no touchdowns no interceptions that's extremely pedestrian but that's also a guy that's warming up we ran the ball quite a bit so he wasn't able to throw the ball that much and then out of those three incompletions at least one of them were technically dropped by curtis samuel so it's just like he wasn't terrible but it also wasn't spectacular i was expecting to see more deep throws but we didn't get them and then he also didn't play very long it would have been nice if he could have gone an entire half but with all of the offensive line injuries that we've already talked about and we're also going to talk about further when we get to the offensive line part of this video it just wasn't safe to keep him out there very long and speaking of Carson Wentz the guy that was going against him Pat Mahomes 12 and 19 162 yards two touchdowns and a 125.3 passer rating way better 
I mean, he was out there doing Pat Mahomes things, though. He was doing things that only Pat Mahomes can do. And that's why, even though I'm going to get on this third down defense when we get to the defensive part of this video, and I've already kind of discussed it in the intro because it was just such a passionate topic. I couldn't help myself. But at the end of the day, it's Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs. Now, granted, they didn't have McCole Harmon or Juju Smith-Schuster, just like the Panthers last week didn't have Christian McCaffrey or DJ Moore. These teams are out here without some of their best weapons. I mean, Travis Kelsey was out there for a little while, but I think he was only out there for maybe the first series. After that, they took him out. So it's still no excuse, but at the end of the day, it is the Chiefs. It is still Pat Mahomes. It's Eric bien is Andy Reid. So, like, they're expected to beat up on even good defenses. But at the end of the day, the way we went out there was inexcusable no matter who we played. And at the end of the day, if you can't beat the Chiefs, it's not necessarily like if you can't beat the Chiefs, you, who can you beat? But these are teams you're going to have to play, especially if you want to get to the postseason. You're going to have to win these type of games. You're going to have to beat some teams that, that people don't expect you to beat. You're going to have to be the underdog and come out victorious in some games. You can't only just beat the teams that people expect you to beat. And then we have the odds of winning by by Las Vegas betting. Like, you have to beat teams like the Chiefs. You got to be better than them. We can't just consistently lose to the teams better, supposedly better than us, and beat against the teams that are supposedly worse than us because we're going to lose some games that were against teams that were better than supposedly. So we got to get those back by beating teams that were supposed to be better than. So there's no excuse against losing to the Chiefs the way we did. I mean, weren't we down at 14 0 at one point? That was atrocious, man. That was terrible. Yeah, we were because our only touchdown in the first half was Taylor Heineke to Cam Sims. So, yeah, we were down 14 0 with the starters. That's terrible. That's absolutely horrible. And then, speaking of Taylor Heineke, he looked like the best quarterback out there for the short time he was out there. Again, Carson Wentz, it seemed like they weren't trying to do too much. And so, it's obviously Taylor Heineke's your backup. He's not competing with Carson Wentz I don't care what Taylor Heineke does out there there's no chance he's starting over Carson Wentz he's not that good he's very limited that Deami Brown play just the lack of arm strength Deami Brown probably runs that for a touchdown but overall Taylor Heineke had the best day today and then moving to Sam Howe he looked really good in the beginning but some of those rookie mistakes that he got away with last week he didn't get away with this week he had two throws that should have been intercepted last week. This week, one of them actually was. So it, it wasn't even like he necessarily played that much worse. It just seemed worse because he got away with a lot. And then plus, he was more explosive. He had higher highs last week. But, I mean, he had pretty much the same amount of lows and the same type of lows. Rookie mistakes. That's the most important thing. It's the type of bad things that he's doing. The rookie mistakes is not reading the field. It's inaccuracies at times. Things like that. I expected that. I still expected him to outplay the bad moments today it just kind of looked worse because he ended bad he ended poorly if he would have done the same exact thing he did today but flip it say he starts the game with those first two bad possessions that he just had that he ended the game with and then say he ends the game with that first really good possession where they marched down the field and got a touchdown with Jared Patterson if he ended the game like that we would be far more optimistic it would be a completely different narrative but because he ended the game poorly after starting the game very well it looks worse but again, if you flip it, if he starts his week two off against the Chiefs with an interception and then he looks really good towards the end, if you just flip it, nobody's panicking. But everybody's panicking and acting like we need to go ahead and bring up Cole Kelly because he ended the game poorly. Again, he basically did a lot of the same things he did last week. He just got away with some of it last week, and he didn't get away with it this week. It's just that simple. Then running back-wise, I loved what I saw. First of all, the offensive line was creating running lanes for Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson like it was nothing. Again, with a lot of backups out there, only one starter for the majority of the time, and we only had two at most with Chase Willie in there on a pitch count. The fact that our backup O-line looked that good against the starting Chiefs O-line, that's very encouraging. And we're going to talk about that when we get to the offensive line. But there's a reason I'm talking about it with the running backs. Granted, Brian Robinson looked really good running in between the tackles. Antonio Gibson looked great out in space. But they wouldn't be able to do what they do without the offensive line. So they deserve some credit. But back to the running backs, Brian Robinson, your number one running back. Literally, your starting running back. Antonio Gibson was on the first kickoff return, and Brian Robinson was completely out there with the first team, except for like maybe one or two carries that Antonio Gibson got. And then the thing that like was the nail in the coffin was the fact that when Taylor 
Taylor Heineke came out there. Antonio Gibson was the running back out there, was the majority running back out there at that time. So that clearly showed that Brian Robinson was first team and Antonio Gibson was second team. If Antonio Gibson wouldn't have been out there super long with Taylor Heineke, you could maybe say like, oh, they just wanted to take a look at Brian Robinson. We know we got with Antonio Gibson. But Brian Robinson was out there a lot with the starters and then Antonio Gibson was out there a lot with the second stringers and Taylor Heineke that did say something. Brian Robinson was literally your starting running back in this game. Now, I don't know if that actually carries on into the regular season, but I liked a lot of what I saw today. Brian Robinson, I'm going to keep saying it, is your Mark Ingram. There's the Alabama connection. And then Antonio Gibson as your Alvin Kamara. And there goes the Atlanta connection. I think that's perfect. I think this offense is deadly if we utilize them that way. Say if Brian Robinson gets the first carry of the game most of the time. He's out there the first time. But I want Antonio Gibson on the field a lot anyway. And Rivera even spoke about it in his press conference after the game again i haven't had a chance to watch it but i've seen a couple of quoted tweets from it and he basically said they want to continue to get antonio gibson out in space just like they did not completely agree use him like alvin kamara like cordell patterson and let him make plays like he made today you saw how open he was getting as a receiver you saw some of those catches from inaccurate passes that he was real that he was reeling in making guys miss out in space to get more yards after the catch that is what he does best never forget that 80 yard screen pass against the buffalo bills i don't think anybody else on this team could have done that i love jd mckissick but he trips over his own feet at certain times brian robinson love him i'm super excited about him but he doesn't have the speed and athleticism to do that antonio gibson is probably your only player maybe curtis samuel maybe one of these other receivers maybe that could have taken that screen 80 yards the way that he did against the buffalo bills and he showed you some of that today against the chiefs again against the backups with the backups but he still looked really good and that is the ideal combination brian robinson and antonio gibson is your one two punch your mark ingram and your alvin kamara i think that's absolutely beautiful we showed a little bit of that we showed a little bit of that today and i hope scott turner takes advantage of that more often especially in the regular season and then jonathan williams and jared patterson actually looked pretty good at times they looked really good good vision jared patterson got cheated out of that one touchdown and then got it right back afterwards i like the fact that scott turner called that play to allow him to get it it again because they should have never blown the whistle for stop forward progress right there let the man figure it out he's not a quarterback wait till he's down to call it it's not that serious and it's preseason too so it's just like come on let the guy have his moment so shouts out to jonathan williams and jared patterson they're making that last fourth running back spot highly competitive i still think jonathan williams is above jared patterson but jared patterson has been doing everything he can to prove that he should be the guy there and then tight end wise nothing really to note Sam is Reyes on IR, Cole Turner, John Bates, and Logan Thomas are all out. Curtis Hodge is out as well. So Armani Rogers and Eli Wolf are literally our only tight ends. That's it. That's it. Eli Wolf's clearly not making the team. He's a Georgia Bulldog, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you now, he's not good enough to maybe not even make our practice squad. We just have him out there as a body right now, literally. I'm surprised we haven't gone after a free agent tight end. The Patriots picked up Wattemeyer like immediately. I don't know why we weren't in on that, but it's whatever. But I'm guessing that we're not going after veteran tight ends right now because we really just need a camp body. We're not trying to sign the guy that's actually going to play a lot in the regular season. We just want somebody like an Eli Wolf that can come in and just basically be a deep default tight end to at least have out there when we're doing certain things to give defense certain to give our defense certain looks and practices and things like that we don't want to sign a guy because i think they're optimistic about cole turner john bates and logan and logan thomas's injuries i think they'll th i think they think that they'll be perfectly fine week one at the very least cole turner and john bates with no injury worries and i think we'll just be just fine so i don't think so in my opinion again we're not signing a veteran free agent tight end because we don't necessarily need them for the regular season it would be nice to have them right now but then again i'm really happy that armani rogers is out there making plays he looks really good in the receiving game he's improving as a blocker now he did have that one unnecessary block where he was blocking too long but i know the coaches are always on him telling him to be more physical right there he got a little too physical i'm not too mad at him but you still can't do that but i'm pretty happy with what i saw from armani rogers these first two preseason games and he may actually carve out a spot on this roster i really hope we find a way to keep him because i know if we put him on the practice squad and let the other team take him they're going to be patient enough to develop him and he's going to end up being a really good tight end i keep saying he has darren waller potential because i believe it i'm telling y'all and then again eli wolf he's just a guy that's out there because we just need a guy out there he's 
he's not going to really do that much. And then receiver wise, I love the fact that Scott Turner got Jahan Dotson the ball out of the backfield, let him make a play. I like the fact that Terry McLaurin got the ball in the passing game and out of the backfield on that one screen, let him make a play. Curtis Samuel is still healthy. He's out there going for going up for contested catches, even though he didn't come down with it, but he hit the ground pretty hard. He's out there getting tackled, all kinds of stuff, and is still healthy he's still good to go no ramp down so it sounds like curtis samuel is ready to be unleashed i can't wait for scott turner to finally utilize those guys in the right way i just don't understand with terry mcclure and johan dotson and curtis samuel somebody's not open every play so i gotta look at the all 22 to see if the Chiefs defense was just that good or Carson Wentz wasn't seeing guys but there's just no way with all three of those guys healthy fully healthy fully explosive somebody's not open every play I'm just not understanding how we're not able to get a touchdown almost every possession with those guys ridiculous and then the rest of the receivers Dax Mill made some really good plays contested catches yards after catch all kinds of stuff definitely fighting for a roster spot and then Cam Sims man finally threw him the ball before November isn't that amazing Cam Sims getting the ball before November he that Taylor Heineke drive that resulted in a touchdown Cam Sims started the drive Taylor Heineke and Antonio Gibson carried the drive all the way into the red zone and then Cam Sims finished it I loved I loved what I saw from Cam Sims right there I'm definitely one of those people that feel like Cam Sims needs to get the ball more but we'll see and then outside of that nothing really notable uh, Alex Erickson I don't know man you don't look good enough in punt returns and kick returns to really warrant taking up a roster spot right now he honestly looks like a more impactful receiver than returner he looks terrible as a returner right now we're gonna get into that when we get to the special teams part of this video but i don't know what's going on there and i highly doubt he makes the team because even though he's been a better receiver than returner he's not a good enough receiver to take the spot of a cam sims or a dax Milne or a deami brown and speaking of deami brown i know he gets a lot of hate and granted there was some plays out there that he left on the field that he could have made but that one throw from Sam Howe was just a slight underthrow by Sam Howe. If Sam Howe throws it just a little bit further, Deami Brown's probably running for a touchdown. But again, Deami Brown also just didn't have a good day overall. But I'm not going to blame every play that was a negative play with him involved on him. He does need to learn how to separate better. Up the field everywhere. So far, he still only has one route to his name. A go route. That's it. I need to see you be able to separate underneath better. And then, moving on to the defense... I mean, like I said, man, the Chiefs got away with whatever they wanted to get away with. Third downs. I mean, they were able to run the ball when they needed to. Pat Mahomes. It sucks, too, because the defensive line was one step away so much today. So much. The defensive line, so many plays, one step away from a sack or at least a hit to force Pat Mahomes to throw it a little weird. They were always one step away over and over again. So it's hard for me to really get on them because they looked really good against the run at times. And then they also looked looked like they were getting a lot of pressure but they just didn't result in any hits hurries or sacks like that so that's the problem we need that guy that's one step quicker that could be chase young right now that looks like it's shaka tony but we're gonna get to that but yeah man the defensive line man first of all fl bada was really good today he was one of our best players defense offense whatever even though he was going against backups he made plays left to right batting down balls getting pressure on the quarterback in their face making plays against the run fa abada was everywhere today great day from him and of course deron Payne, montez sweat and jonathan allen gonna do what they're gonna do they had pretty good days as well but backup wise i mean i saw a couple of plays from james Smith williams that made him stand out a little bit so i remember one play from david bada that was good i'm about to go back and look at Fedarian mathis a little bit bit more because i didn't get to see him shine a lot but i'm pretty sure because when i went back and looked at the panthers game he shined even more than i thought he did because there's always going to be some plays that he doesn't get credit for that he's the one him taking up double teams and pushing the pocket back he he helps a lot and he allows other guys to make plays so even though i didn't necessarily notice him a lot this game live i'm pretty sure when i go and watch the film i'm gonna be very impressed with what fair darian mathis did casey two hill was straight william bradley king made a couple of plays daniel wise made a couple of plays but ultimately outside of the starting guys and maybe even including the starting guys fa obata was one of the best defensive linemen today and then like i mentioned earlier shaka tony nobody else on this team can do what he does off the edge that speed rush that von miller like speed rush man he is the only one with that speed burst and quickness off the edge bro it looked like he literally knew the snap he was moving before the offensive line that was blocking him was moving i don't know how he guessed that i don't know how he timed it that well then the explosion and then the bend the dip under him to get that sack 
That's literally almost what he did against the Panthers, but then he went and messed it all up by ripping off Matt Corral's helmet. If he would have tackled him the same way like he just did today, that would have also been a great play. Shaka Tony's very explosive off the edge. He has to make this team as a situational pass rusher because we don't have anybody else that can do that. I love Chase Young and I love Montez Sweat, and I would I feel like they should be that explosive and quick, but they're not. Shaka Tony definitely is a pass rush specialist that's truly special. Remember, Micah Parsons was talking up Shaka Tony like crazy during the draft process more than he was even talking up Jahan Dotson who we just drafted this year or other defensive players that were currently on that team with them he felt like Shaka Tony got taken way too late in the draft and that we got a draft still and I feel like if Shaka Tony could just get more playing time he would show it now granted I'm a big Shaka Tony should be our Sam linebacker guy because I feel like he can cover better than people expect now granted pass rushing is always going to be his best skill but I feel like if he were a Sam linebacker he would be allowed to be on the field more if he was kind of our Buffalo nickel in a way kind of like a big big buffalo nickel and also was able to rush the passer occasionally and be on the snap and be on the field more i think he could be a true disruptor for us and that's really the theme of the day we were not able to cause any negative plays we weren't able to get a bunch of sacks we weren't able to get any turnovers nothing we weren't able to really force a whole bunch of penalties on the opposing offense we just weren't disruptive a lot of our stuff was just safe and just bend but don't break but we kept breaking at the end anyway we were just playing way too passive it was just we're not making plays we're just going through the motions everybody's trying to be disciplined but no play is being made nothing explosive Shaka Tony and F.A. Obata were some of the best defensive players I saw out there on the field today. Then linebacker wise, I remember seeing Jamin Davis shine a couple of times in the run game. I don't remember what he did in coverage, but I'm going to have to go back and look at the All-22 to see that. But against the run, Jamin Davis was actually really stout. He had that one play where he was in the backfield immediately and had the guy wrapped up. Now, the guy kind of carried him for almost a yard a game, so I didn't really like that. It wasn't a perfect play, but like instincts wise and trusting his gut, and knowing that they were running the ball hitting the gap exploding going past the offensive line and making the play Jamin Davis was great at times today Cole Holcomb got exposed a couple of times but like it's Travis Kelsey we don't have a linebacker in the NFC East that can cover Travis Kelsey so you would hope that Cole Holcomb could do a better job than that but at the end of the day it was Travis Kelsey and Cole Holcomb overall had a decent day wasn't as good as the day he had against the Panthers he's probably not going to be one of our highest pro football focus grades like he was remember I do a series after to every game preseason regular season and i'm speaking it into existence postseason even though you know that looks kind of ugly right now after this but after every game i break down the pro football focus grades of everybody that played starters even backups offense defense and special teams and cole holcomb was one of our highest grades last week i highly doubt he will be one of the highest grades going into this next week and then as far as backups go david mayo bad in coverage good against the run what do you expect Khalid hudson the one play i noticed him he did get a guy out of bounds and coverage but like he just seemed like a step too slow I want to see him be faster than that he's like a safety converted in the linebacker I expect him to be a little bit faster than that and then everybody else I don't really remember I think Nathan Gary made a play but um it was it was really fuzzy as we went on so I'm gonna have to watch a lot more tape to truly give my opinion on a lot of these guys especially a lot of the backups and then DB wise the corners look pretty good outside of Kendall Fuller getting killed on that touchdown that just really upset me the William Jackson had that one pass breakup that shouldn't have been called as a pass interference. It was both of the guys fighting. That was a bad call by the ref, in my opinion. And then after that, after he made that great play, again, it was flagged. I felt like it shouldn't have been. He wasn't targeted anymore from what I believe so it was more so like second half of last season William Jackson where he's shutting down an entire third of the field the quarterback doesn't even look his way because he just assumes the receiver is not open so that's good Kendall Fuller after that bad play that he had for that touchdown stepped up big time and was really good from there on out Benjamin St. Juice got killed on that one double move where I forgot the receiver but he kind of took it inside a little bit then he shot up and William and Benjamin St. Juice was lost he, he didn't know what was going on other than that he was pretty good as well so the corners played pretty well out of the starters at least the backups you know there's a little bit more discrepancy Corn Elder made a really good play but got hurt doing it Danny Johnson was getting carved up again I'm surprised because I'm actually pretty high on Danny Johnson and then the other guys I didn't really notice that much Christian Holmes made a bad play on special teams like he didn't block a guy one time whereas the why we had a really bad kickoff return um, but again, I'm about to look at the tape for a lot of the minute details. But overall, the corners played pretty well, especially the starters. It was the safeties that were getting killed. Cameron Curl had one of the worst games I've ever seen him have in a burgundy and gold uniform. He was getting killed 
every which way. Bobby McCain, people always talk about how he's better in the slot than in safety, especially free safety. They had him in the slot one on one against a tight end. He got killed, got burnt with a double move. You know, it, it just wasn't a good day, man, especially from the safeties. When Cameron Curl is letting you down more than once, too, I remember three plays vividly where it was just like, what's going on? Now, I'm about to look at the tape. Because Cameron Curl's my guy. He's been such a beacon of consistency. So it's hard to believe that that many things were his fault. But from what it looked like live, it did. But I'm going to have to go back and look at the tape to see if it like was maybe not his fault. Maybe it was somebody else's and he tried to make up for it. And then made a bad play trying to make up for somebody else's fault. I don't know. I know it sounds like I'm making excuses. It's just so hard to believe that Cameron Curl had a day that bad. That was just not good. Then Derek Forrest and Percy Butler flashed at times but also made mistakes at times that's what you're gonna get i expect better and i think they're going only getting better and they're gonna just continue to contribute on defense i like them a lot i love them as backup safeties and i think percy butler is our future starting free safety over bobby mccain at some point may not be this year but some point maybe two three years down the line and then jeremy reeves um that one penalty they called on him helmet to helmet that was a terrible call that wasn't outside of that i don't really remember what he did except for that one play i forgot i think it was danny johnson underneath jeremy reeves above they let the receiver get open so that was a bad play on both of their parts outside of that i don't really remember what jeremy reeves did so that's like one negative that technically wasn't a negative and then the other negative he was kind of late to get into the receiver that danny johnson should have been covering underneath but he got burnt um, and then outside of that, I don't really remember seeing what he did. And then Farrar Gardner, don't really remember noticing him. And then Steven Parker, the MVP from last game, didn't shine as much today. He didn't look like Lewis Cena today, which is expected. He's technically last on the depth chart out of the entire safety group. If you look at our depth chart, he's the only one that's in the fourth string column. Everybody's third string it up. He's the only fourth string safety, period, strong or free. And so, like, you know, he's not supposed to just go out there and be Ed Reed or even Lewis Cena. Like I said, that's what he looked like last game, being everywhere my georgia bulldog lewis seen but um today you know it, i don't even think it was a bad day he just didn't shine as much he didn't make as many great plays uh, that's another guy i'm gonna have to really look at the tape to truly know what happened with him but yeah man overall that the defense there were positives to take away but there were also a lot of negatives really really weird day and then special teams wise even tress way started off kind of bad kicking the ball into the end zone then he got it together after that joey sly looked good he made his couple of extra points which he needs to do and he was booming the kick into the back of the end zone for the chiefs after we scored so that was good to know so special teams wise joey sly was our best guy tressway is probably a close second cameron cheeseman i'm not i don't think we had any false snaps any any errors on snapping the ball so i'm assuming he did his job and then return wise nobody was it dax Milne was all right alex erickson was bad Kyrick mcgowan didn't even get a chance because i think that was the christian holmes play where special teams blocking did no favors for Kyrie mcgowan i mean he he was supposed to be able to run that ball way further than that and he should have but the blocking was so bad people were down there almost by the time he got the ball it was bad and then outside of that i don't really remember even antonio gibson who returned the first kick or at least he was back there i don't even remember exactly what he did did he get the ball i don't remember that's another thing i'm about to go look at but special teams returns wise we have nothing special going on so i could say just keep throwing antonio gibson back there because right now alex erickson definitely looks like he's not it and dax milne is barely even slightly better but dax milne is gonna make this team because he looks really good at receiver so he's gonna make the team regardless and maybe he's just starting punt returner but i just don't see it worth keeping an extra roster spot just to keep alex erickson as a returner if he's gonna return like that we might as well throw antonio gibson or dax milne or somebody else back there please but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like if you liked it if you learned anything and as always man i appreciate all the support man shout out to everybody that left a like on the live stream y'all know i'm live streaming every preseason and regular season game throughout the game breaking down everything that i'm seeing and of course we're doing a bunch of laughing we're talking about every we were talking about music for like half of the fourth quarter but that's what i do man whatever y'all want to talk about we're going to talk about it i'm live streaming not only for me because it's fun but i'm also live streaming for y'all and we can talk about whatever of course we got to mostly focus on football but i'm always going to talk about whatever y'all talk about if y'all ask me a question about music or anything we're going to talk about it and i mean we were even talking about atlanta having qt and 
the northeast of America having like 7-Eleven. Really a lot of America having 7-Eleven, but I know Atlanta doesn't have it. I mean, we just went on complete tangents. But hey, that's what the live stream's for. Again, I appreciate everybody that left the like. I appreciate everybody that donated. Shouts out to all of my sponsors. Shouts out to all the new sponsors too as well, man. Thank y'all. And shouts out to all of my Pro Bowl sponsors who name me see scrolling on the screen right now. I and mean, I really appreciate y'all. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.